we didn't really see the theology of capital ministries when we started. It was more of a pragmatic um, implementation of a sports ministry methodology in American culture that had worked so well. Why not do that same thing with the public servant affinity group of American culture? But as we began to study the passages that relate to the Great Commission, we began to see that, for instance, in Acts 9, when Paul, then Saul, is commissioned by Jesus on the road to Damascus when he's blinded, Jesus sends Ananias, if you remember the story. And about Acts 9, 15, Jesus says, go Ananias, for he saw, and Ananias was a little timid about this assignment. So Jesus says, just go Ananias, for he saw, as a chosen instrument for mine, declare my glory before the house of Israel and kings and the Gentile nations. And so sandwiched between the, the macro aspects of Pauling and calling to Jew and Gentile is the specificity of reaching political leaders. That's in Paul's you know, frontal lobes as he's commissioned by Christ after being blind for three days. So it's, uh, it's glued into his brain. And so it's no doubt, or it's, it, should be, it should come as no surprise that as he uh, proceeds on his missionary journey, the cities he goes to in the three missionary journeys are primarily capital provinces of the Roman Empire. So 14 of the 18 cities in the three missionary journeys are capital cities where he's planting churches. And Luke, who's recording all this in the book of Acts, you know, he writes Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and he writes the book of Acts. One third of the total word count of the New Testament is found in the book of Acts and in Luke combined. And both are written to most excellent Theophilus, which is a title in Greek for a political leader in the Roman Empire. And so I can rest my case on just the fact that one third of the New Testament is written to try to convince one political leader to come to Christ. But within that persuasion of the book of Acts, not only do you see Luke recording the fact that Theophilus, look, we're going to capital cities to reach your type. You should come to Christ just because of that. But of all the individual accounts of conversion in the book of Acts, there being, I think, 14 individual, I call them micro conversion accounts. There's a lot of macro conversion accounts. This day, 3,000 were added to the church. You see that throughout the book. But of the individuals that Luke uh, decides to record, and I think under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, are people that are in public service, like uh, Sergius Paulus, or uh, Blastus, or the Philippian jailer, or there's two treasurers that come to Christ in the book of Acts. And so he, I think, selectively is choosing individual conversion accounts in order to influence Theophilus to do the same. Well, at the other end, the other bookend of Pauline calling, as he hands off the baton to the first century church leaders there and after, i.e. in the pastoral epistles, specifically to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4, he basically says in the Greek, Timothy parakaleo un proton. And that's basically, I call you alongside of me as your first priority, not sequential priority, but in terms of importance. The first thing you should do is to pray for kings and those who are in authority. And these prayers we know are informed by verse four. The context of the passage is that it's evangelistic praying for kings and those who are in authority. So Paul's basically saying, listen, I was one to Christ on the road to Damascus. I was told by Jesus through his surrogate Ananias that I ought to be about reaching political leaders in order to efficiently fulfill the great commission, which those guys did, Acts 17, they turned the whole world upside down without our technology, without our resources, but through their strategy of reaching political leaders, these guys turned the whole world upside down. Paul then says, Timothy, my career is coming to an end. Make sure you have this same emphasis ostensibly throughout the whole of the church age. So our thesis at Capital Ministries, theologically, is that if that's how they did it in the first century without all the bells and whistles we have today, then why don't we do the same today? So why don't we be in these countries winning the political leaders to Christ? Because they typically, the capital cities are usually in the center of the country, like Minsk is to Belarus, and all the roads lead from here. And I like to think of that geographical visual picture as also one that's ideologically, philosophically, 
one of this is where the idea of the culture comes from and this is where the center of influence exists so why not go right to the fulcrum of power and get them into the gospel and present the gospel to them because then everything will permeate from there much more quickly than if we send our missional dollars into the bush out in some distant you know minor city of belarus if we can reach the political leaders not only do all the roads lead from minsk to the whole of the country but um, these guys who are in parliament speak before groups every day and if they have a testimony they can share christ with their peers absolutely that's so that's what capital ministries is all about in terms of a big picture theologically i love that